have to say these plans are, are excellent. In fact, I've already modeled uh, kits that I've gotten. This is the best rigging plan I've seen. Everything is crystal clear. And the challenge really is how you connect various blocks and tackles to the various parts of the ship. So with that in mind, the time has come to go to our library and research the various uh, parts of the rigging that we're going to take. Then there's no shortage of uh, approaches. And there will be three books that really you will want to look at. The first is Peterson's Rigging Perial Model Ships. The second, of course, is the Ship Modeler's Note from the National Research Guild. Perhaps the most important one is James Lee's The Masting and Rigging of English Ships of War. And finally, Peter Goodwin's will be the final decision maker um, of what we should do. The first part of the rigging that we are going to deal with is the bowsprit. Um, we've already been through a, a tape on how it's made up, so it's fully made up. Um, so ready now, it's just putting the various blocks on and actually sticking it into the bow. And we look at the various challenges we'll have of how those connections are made and how the ropes are attached to this part of the ship. Having read the instructions in the book and looked at the various plans, you now need to go and look at some of your re reference materials as it relates to the specific thing that you are about to install so that you get a true understanding. Um, you get familiar with the terms that are being used and how the various ties are going to be made. And then, as in many cases, you have to decide what the compromise is of how you're actually going to rig the particular um, fitting on, in this case, to the bowsprit. Um, there are many ways to tie it, and certainly the way that it was tied in, in, on a full-size ship, uh, full ship would be difficult in many cases to do on a model. Um, and that's why the, the notes really, once you understand how the rail um, fitting was tied, and you read the reference in relation to model boats, you can make a fairly or come up with a fairly good plan of how you're going to attach that particular fitting um, to the model. So with that in mind, let's start and uh, we'll go back to the plans and start on the bowsprit. We put some PV on the end of the, of the bowsprit, the part that fits inside, and then we put just a little touch underneath here to hold it in place and then started working on the gamma ring. This um, takes five wraps around the bowsprit through the gamma ring slot, which is at the bottom, being very careful not to damage or pull the cheeks out. And then just under the bowsprit, we wrap the gamma ring five times and tie it off there. I also put some water down PVA and once it dries we'll cut that off and it'll leave a nice clean knot. Just quickly going through the blocks, there are two five millimeter dead eyes uh, that are the backstay shrouds. Um, then going down to the, the um, bow of the boat, there are two bow stays these are also 5mm dead eyes. Then there's a standing lift which is attached to the middle of the spirit sail yard. Um, it says one, I don't understand why they're not two, but anyway, that's what it says. And then there's the heart shaped 7mm block which is the main preventer stay, which really holds up the main mast. And then right at the top, there is a three millimeter um, block right at the end. And now we see these in on the model. Um, don't let this concern you. It, it turns because it's installed um, to be movable. And the final little block right at the end. The jib boob has a pin that holds it in place. Um, I had seen some others that actually had a lashing that held that in place. 
but um, in Goodwin's book it clearly shows it's a it's a brass pin so we just used one of the nails um, and that worked perfectly we're now going to install the bob stays this is you this uses a 0.5 millimeter line and uh, has a spacer a little brass spacer that's 15 millimeters um, and the whipping line is the thinnest black thread that you have. The reason for the two tweezers is first of all to keep the line taut as you do the whipping but also um, the second one at the top is to keep the dead eye from turning. As you start to pull the whipping line the dead eye will tend to want to turn in the same direction. Just needs a little patience. Um, if you see the lines crossing, you just have to come back and, and redo them, and eventually you'll get it right. Um, the, the way you start this is you start on one side, then go to the center, then go to the other side. Leave the line and don't try and cut it or glue it at this point in time. We're now going to do the bow spit shrouds. So we go back to the separator that we had developed. Um, here, we're going to use the same one which is uh, 15 millimeters and put it in the center hole uh, and then same thing here the center hole And that sets the distance, so we're just going to tie this now. Once I get the first tie in, and then we do the, the same thing we had done before. Lock this in place because it's going to turn. And simply start winding or whipping the line. Um, for about eight eight millimeters. It's um, very hard to, to see this. I actually had to put on the magnifying glasses. So we're complete now. Just wait for the glue to dry, cut the lines off, and then we'll run the line in, the, in between the dead eye blocks.